Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. That will be our uh, very first tournament after uh, that pause we have to do. I believe, like everywhere around the world, nobody was uh, being able to do anything. So it's, uh, uh, I believe, we are, we are very fortunate to be able to be here and to start uh, uh, working and like competing, like doing tournaments the way we used to do before all that thing happened around the world. So thank you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And let's go over our half rate training program. That will be the very first one in English, all in English. Okay. Uh, but uh, I believe way even more important than, than the ones in Portuguese. Okay. Because uh, uh, the tournaments are here in America. So I believe we should, like the guys that are here are living here already. So uh, uh, if you still have some concerns about the English, okay, we have, we all have to work uh, to get better on that, okay? So let's start, uh, uh, start with the heifer profile, okay? Uh, uh, the heifer uh, uh like one thing that I always talk to every referee is if you have any concern like uh, uh, about the rules, about the movements you see inside the fight, if you have a problem uh, judging some of the techniques, the first place you have to go to try to get better on that is not on the rules book, it's on the mat, okay? So you should go to the mat, put your gear on, and try to work as much as possible on those techniques that you have a hard time. Try to understand as best as you can how to move, how you handle the situation, how, uh, uh, how much uh, uh, strength you have to use, how you have to move your hip, what would be uh, uh, the directions you could go, because that's exactly what's going to help you the most at the, on, on the max. Okay, you're gonna be able to uh, uh, stop and to restart a fight, a fight better based on that. You know what type of transitions the guy on bottom and top gonna be uh, uh, able to work. Okay, so going to the mat and getting your jiu-jitsu better would be the first key for you to become a better referee. Okay, and, and like based on, on how good you work, especially on that part, on how good, how clear you work your gesture, how much you show over there, uh, the confidence you have on doing uh, uh, everything over there is how you get the trust of uh, both parts over there, not just the athletes that are there competing while you do your job as a referee, but the coaches as well. Okay, you have to be very careful because you have to do that like uh, uh, as serious as possible. Okay, but you're still gonna show uh, uh, a lot of sympathy to everyone. Okay, so you cannot be uh, so serious that you're gonna be like rude to the people, but you cannot be so uh, 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 like let's say easy. Okay, that's gonna show everyone that you're not uh, uh, working your best over there. Okay, uh, uh, for every tournament that we go, okay, so the, uh, one thing that uh, we hear a lot over here is like, uh, you don't know what's going on because you, know, you, you are not walking on the shoes. Okay, so put yourself on the athlete side, put yourself on the coach side, Okay, that will make you uh, uh, understand better why they are yelling so much at you at the moment if you are over there. Okay, it doesn't mean that you're not going to be with focus enough to understand uh, uh, that might be only pressure that they put on you. Okay, but understand that they are dealing with emotional or uh, some emotions that you are not and you should not. But even even being emotional, sometimes they will be what they will be telling you will be uh, uh, better than what you saw over there. Maybe it was a time that you blink a little bit, so maybe you were still overlooking on your mind 
the technique that just happened before that, okay? So then maybe you lost the, the, the next movement and based on what they're yelling at you outside, you're going to be able to get back on the fight. So you have to hear all that, okay? But you have to have a very good filter to understand what's just pressure and what's going to be good for you to uh, uh, have that, to, to really, to, to, to go over uh, uh, as you're there, okay? And you have to, to make sure you do all that on every single fight, okay? I understand that uh, uh, as we get the, let's say the black belt, uh, a black belt final, and then the next fight is a white belt, a white belt match, so you go so focused to the, to the black belt match, then as this fight is done, you relax, but it's another two guys coming in to fight that they deserve the same respect and the same uh, uh, good job as you did on the fight before. So and on the time that we, as we relax, if you have done any job as I have read before, you know that the time that you relax is exactly when the mistakes happen. Okay, so the, the white belt paid exactly the same registration as every black belt did. So they deserve the, uh, the same respect, okay? So if the mission of IBJJF is to make Jiu-Jitsu the biggest martial art in the world, uh, we need now as many white belts as we need the black belts, okay? So maybe we're gonna give a bad experience with that white belt over there, and that will make the, this guy uh, uh, not compete anymore. And plus, right after that, stop doing jiu-jitsu because something that we did over there. So that's not a good feeling for you to have. That is got, that, that's not a good uh, uh, thing for you to carry on after that, okay? Because uh, uh, our goal is to get there, do the best as we can, to have everyone living, okay, with the best experience as possible. So we should always uh, get back on the mat as we switch to the, with the partners five minutes before, okay? That, that uh, would give us some time, let's say if we, uh, it's a fight that uh, my partner over there cannot go over because it's a, a teammate or someone that they already know, okay? Here in, in Texas, we have a lot of that because we have too many big teams. We have uh, GF Team, Gracie Barra, Jack Matt, okay? But we have uh, uh, Grace from Mai Tai is big here. Uh, Rodrigo Pinheiro has a very big team. And Austin is uh, one of the places that uh, we don't have that many big teams yet, but it's close to everyone to come. It's close for guys to come from Houston, for the ones that come from San Antonio. Is for the ones that come from Dallas as well, okay? So we, we can expect that we have all those big teams over there. So for sure, you're going to know a lot of people that are over there. And even if you know if it's related to your team, you should not uh, uh, be there on this fight, okay? Uh, so more than that, that especially because you should not take advantage of your position as a referee, okay, to help or to, to get any uh, uh, let's say to get anything better for you because of the position you have, okay? When you're there working as a referee, you should take care only as your job as a referee, okay? You're not there, uh, you're not there as uh, any team. So tomorrow, as you put the IGGF referee's uh, uh, uniform on, you are a IGGF team. So it doesn't mean you're not gonna have for you any of the fights of your team, okay? Because you're representing IGGF on that moment. Okay, and let's be very careful. I know, like, we all come from the jiu-jitsu. We have the, the habit to talk it to. If, if we see something, if we see a fight, we have the habit to talk about that. Man, did you see this sweep over there? No, did you see it take down? The other guy felt like a, a, a banana. 
okay? But it's no good to, to have that because might be someone related to the person passing by you at, the, at this point, okay? Then you're not going to be able to uh, uh, explain that later. That's going to bring all, all, only bad attention, the bad type of attention for you, okay? Uh, uh, we're going to have live stream tomorrow for uh, Flow Grappling. So uh, I don't know if you're gonna have that on every single match area, but if we have a camera, we have a microphone as well. So they will not just have the, the, the uh, they, they're gonna have audio as well. So all those uh, comments that we make might be used against us uh, later on, okay? So as I said, you have to be able to filter every complaint that coach made at you Okay, uh, uh, deal as best as you can with the pressure that comes from outside. Okay, you, you have to see that there's a different perspective. Okay, I will be there to take care of that because like just by seeing the same thing at, uh, from a different angle. Okay, I'm here, half in, inside the match. Okay, I'm inside the match. So I'm in front of uh, the fight here, the TV is there, the scoreboard, okay? So the coach is right behind that. So the angle that I see the things going on is the opposite of uh, what the coach is seeing. So maybe the coach is yelling about something that he saw over there that we couldn't see from here. And we score the points based on what we saw here that the coach could not see over there. So maybe uh, uh, under his perspective, under his eyes, he's right. It doesn't mean you're wrong, okay? So we have to be uh, uh, aware of that, that type of situation, okay? If, if uh, uh, the problem is not with you, you should, not, you should never take sides on that uh, uh, argument. Okay, so you have to, if you see, firstly, the, the referees should not talk to the coach. So that's the referee coordinator that, that has to do over there. Okay, so the only thing that the, the referee should say, hey, I'm sorry, I understand your point, but I'm not allowed to talk to any coach. So I will ask the coordinator to come in here and the coordinator will explain to you that situation. Okay, and uh, uh, I believe we do, we do not have to, to say that, but never uh, too much to repeat, okay, to do not participate, encourage, or engage on any gambling over there. Like, like I said, you there working as a, a, a referee, okay, you should not be participating on those things, okay. So every time we see, like based on, on what I was talking to you guys, that we see things in a different angle, might change change uh, uh, all the perspective on top of that. Okay, so like the referee is here watching the fight, and I'm walking outside from a different angle. I will see uh, uh, the same technique from a different angle. It might change everything. Okay, so if in my mind I believe that uh, uh, the guy made a mistake, why not go talk to that guy to understand, okay, like, what, like the, why the, 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 that point of view, okay? It's important for us to have a very good communication because it will make the relationship better in between the whole group. I believe uh, most of you guys are not here to have for it just tomorrow. Okay, I see uh, a lot of you guys are already like heffering for a long time. I see a lot of you guys already like asking, like wondering to go uh, uh, longer on, on, on that job. Okay, so you have uh, the better uh, we make the relationship in between all of us, uh, always gonna be better for us to be there easier will be for us to be there and work. So even if it's someone that you don't know, okay, try to break that that uh, a bridge, okay, and talk to that person. So uh, uh, for sure you're gonna be respectful, 
Okay, you're not gonna be rude. You're gonna you're gonna come and talk to that person. Say, hey, you, uh, I saw the technique you're there. Uh, what did you see? Why did you score the points? And as you hear that from a, a colleague over there, you have to understand that uh, it, it, it's your partner is not there trying to be disrespectful at you. So you have to understand that. You have to explain, but because that will be good for both of you, okay? <clears throat> and then you explain your points, your, uh, uh, your partner explain uh, their point over there as well, okay? So based on that, you both go talk together to the halfway coordinator because uh, uh, if your partner explains to you the situation, Okay, and then you go back to your man area to just to work, and then maybe the same situation will happen to you, and you're gonna be like, oh my, oh, so what should I do now? Go and judge that the way I used to, or the way my partner just did over there, because what he said to me makes a lot of sense. So if you both go to the half coordinator, then the half coordinator will be the one to tell you guys, okay, so if you see this, that's the way you have to go. If you see that, that's the way you have to go, okay? So you guys, uh, uh, does it make that much sense you guys talk and you guys keep that in between you guys, okay? Remember that most of the times you're not going to be bringing to the corner a, a mistake made by your partner. If it's a mistake, good. If it's not a mistake, good as well because uh, uh, we all going to be able to get better on that situation. So uh, uh, it's very important that, like, especially for the ones that are here longer time or the ones that are here just, let's say, just arrived uh, uh, here in the U.S., okay, uh, you're going to end up seeing, like, a lot of you guys that uh, make for a long time, you, you, you don't see them, okay, but you have to avoid as much as you can to, to show uh, 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 like the, the demonstrations of friendship, okay? Might be someone passing that, and then right after you go back to your main area, and then uh, not the guy that you shake the hand over there, but you start like uh, uh, one match, and then as you see, the, uh, your friend is right outside to coach the guy that's fighting on, on your main area. So to the other side, maybe some other person that saw you talking to this person will not see that as a, as a good thing, okay? Uh, uh, we, we, as a half free, we're not going to be able to coach at all, okay? So before on some tournaments, we could do it. Right now, we cannot coach at all, okay? We're not going to be able to watch videos, Okay, it's very important that, so as usually when the professor comes to you, uh, the only thing you can say is, sorry, professor, but I cannot watch videos. You want me to ask the, the, the happy coordinator to come here? So, but usually when that happens, it's because that coach knows you from another situation or maybe uh, uh, teach a uh, uh, close or maybe it's a teammate, okay? So when they come to you to try to show the video, they already went to the coordinator, okay? And the half a coordinator already said that something that they didn't like it, or they didn't like it because it wasn't what they were wanting, okay? So as they come to you, they, want, they just want a reason to be able to uh, uh, go after that and make a big, seen over there. So social media, okay? I always talk to, to the referees that uh, uh, the best referee is the one that goes to the tournament and go home and no one knows that th this referee was there, okay? So uh, we go to a, a big or a small event, okay? We go there, we work, we get back home, and there is nothing, no one saying anything about you, it means you did a very good job, a very good job, okay? And then, not to have with that because no one is, uh, uh, is talking about you, believe me, no one will talk good about you, 
okay? They, and then you go there and then you make a post talking good about your own job. That will not bring any good, uh, uh, and good things on your direction, okay? You're only going to bring bad uh, uh, media for yourself by the time you go there. So I understand that uh, uh, some of us are still dealing with visa situation, okay? So we have to show that we are working as a referee, okay? Uh, IGGF is very good uh, uh, on that, okay? If you're working for the IGGF, it means you are already in a better level, okay? So go to the Facebook, go to the Instagram, of the federation and make a repost from uh, uh, about some of the pictures that are there. It will be good because it will be already an official picture. Okay, just make sure it's a picture that only you are there. Make sure that's a picture that doesn't show any of the athletes in a bad situation. Okay, so it, it, if there's a one of the athletes in a bad situation, or maybe not showing one of the athletes. Someone will come and say that, oh, so he posts a picture because he liked this guy. So then you're going to have to fight of this guy later on, and they will have rocks to throw at you for sure. So post a picture that you are on your own. Even just raise the arm, they will have someone to talk bad about you because of that. Okay? And uh, uh, one more time, uh, do not take advantage of that, okay? Uh, uh, the, your job as a referee to take advantage in any situation. So then we are done with the uh, uh, referee uh, referee job outside most outside of the mat, okay? We're gonna start now talking about the rules, okay? So every every time IGF make a, a, a new rules book since like, uh, and it has always been that way since the very first one, those are the things that we always go over to be able to drive us. If you understand those four points here, gonna be way easier gonna make way more sense for you, okay? So the first one is safety. Like uh, like I said before, the goal is to make Jiu-Jitsu the biggest martial arts in the world. So if we have uh, uh, safety on the rules, we're gonna be able to have every single school uh, with a lot of people training without having the risk of, uh, uh, for sure we're gonna have the risk of someone getting hurt, but we're gonna have a, a way better chance of everyone being able to go practice it and go back home with no problem. Let's say you walk to a school and they are working slams over there. Would you sign your son to, to train at that school? Probably not. Like, and you, like, especially here in the US, we have a lot of people that start Jiu Jitsu after 30 years old, okay? It's someone that already has a family, Okay, and already has a job and it's looking for Jiu Jitsu because uh, uh, saw something good about Jiu Jitsu, because heard something about good about Jiu Jitsu. And then that person comes to your school. It has to be uh, an environment that gives to that guy or to that girl uh, uh, something that they will be able to go there, work, and go back home, back to their families, and back to their job on the next day with no problem. So safety is very important on that sense, okay? Then we go over efficiency in the self-defense, okay? We know that jiu-jitsu is based on self-defense. It's the best martial arts for you to be able to defend yourself, okay? So based on that, we can understand why some situations, why we score points and some situations why we score more points in some other situations. Let's uh, uh, like mount and back control. Those are the situations that in a real fight situation, you would have the best control on top 
of your opponents. That's why those are the techniques that we score more points inside a, a, a sports tournament, okay? We try to bring this self-defense situation to a sports content where you're gonna have to have those point situations to help your own, or help your own judge and score how, who is doing better over there, okay? Harmony with the teaching method, then we go, uh, uh, we understand that uh, in some belts, or why we do not allow some belts or some age to work some techniques, because uh, uh, let's say a white belt doesn't have that much control, of, especially of the strength, okay? So if we teach a white belt how to do a wrist lock, and this white belt will probably hurt a lot of people on the train. I'm not saying that a higher belt would never do that, but like if it's someone that doesn't have that much control of their self, they will not be able to handle the way they go, okay? So the risk of having someone hurt inside the school would be bigger, okay? And last one, but not less important, in the artist's progression, that shows that you have to be moving forward inside the fight, always looking for a better situation where you're gonna be able to work on submissions. That why, that's why we have uh, 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 calls as stalling inside the fights because you have to be looking for a, be a better situation, okay? And you do not score points when you move in back or inside the fight. So you have the mount, you move back to Neon Belly, you're not progressing on the fight. You're moving backwards. So you're not going to score for that Neon Belly. Okay? So... Working over there, you, so if the, the more that fight is moving, more the referee has to move as well, okay? Being stuck over there while the guys go all around the net area would never help you on judge that fight, okay? First, uh, the safety area of my net area is the safety area of the side as well. Okay, so I have to take care, I have to be uh, on the safety area before the athletes to be there. I have to be aware of the, let's say I have a, a master five purple belt, guys like uh, uh, 50 years old, okay, ultra heavy. So the, those are guys that they have uh, uh, no more than three years, for sure, no more than three years in uh, uh, Jiu-Jitsu experience, okay? And maybe we have on the on the mat on the, uh, right by our side, we have light fat, female light feather, okay? So we cannot afford the risk of those big guys falling on top of those girls. Okay, we cannot uh, we cannot afford the risk of those guys falling outside the mats. We cannot afford the risk of those guys maybe uh, uh, falling on top of the referee. Okay, a lot of times we have a fight with three referees over there. You're gonna have a referee on the chair, and it's our job as well as on the mat by their side to take care of that. So you have to move. You have to be always around the fight, taking care of every direction that they go, okay? And if they are, like, in a ground fight, they're not, like, going for takedowns anymore, that will help you to see the movement in a better way. That will help you all see every single grip that they have that, for sure, we can, we, we have to bring back if they sweep with a, 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 a illegal grip. But if you can prevent that, it's always better, okay? So we're gonna be able to uh, uh, catch the right time to stop the fights, just based on the way we move, okay? That's very important for you guys because you have to be focused and uh, uh, on the fight and move around that to always uh, get the better angle to be able to see everything. Based on that, we're going to try as much as we can to not be in front of the camera, especially like tomorrow we're going to have photographs streaming, like I said, okay? 
But if you are in a point where you can see exactly what's going on, you're not going to move yourself just because of that. Okay? So you have to be very careful, but it doesn't mean that you have to get off the way and might lose the right uh, uh, angle to see what's going on over there. So every time you're working as a side referee, you have to be aware of the mats uh, uh, behind you, okay? We try as much as we can to not have anyone in a chair right on the middle because can have fights coming from almost every side, okay? But in some situations that is just impossible based on the, num based on the number of mats that we have there uh, during the day, okay? You have to be aware of that, but you cannot lose the focus on the fights that you are there to help uh, uh, um, the judge, okay? If you are there, it's because they have to trust you, trust your job, okay? And once you're there to help this, the, the central referee on how to conduct that fight, okay? Uh, especially on these qualification situations, you, we, if you couldn't see from where you are, you should not interfere on that situation. So we're going to go over some videos now. So it's a situation where it's a disqualification. So the central referee has to wait until at least one of the side referees agree with him, then he can stop the fight and dequeue de them. Okay? So it's another example, it was a wrong grip, okay? So it was probably the fourth penalty because, so only the referee over there, we see the referee over here was on the, on the uh, uh, blind angle, so he couldn't see the illegal grip. So that's why he didn't, he, he didn't do anything. He stayed there, okay? But because of one referee agreed with him, he could uh, EQ the guy that made the illegal grip. Okay, again, see, the grip is right there. So the referee could see over there. So one referee agree with the central referee. So he's allowed to DQ this guy. So you make the gesture above your head, you point to the belt of the athlete, and then you raise the arm of his opponent. So when uh, uh, we have many situations where uh, uh, the athlete reach a point score position, but are still caught in a submission, okay? So uh, we have to be aware that maybe the guys, I know, like I, I will, I, I maybe I'm tired, I will not be able to handle the guys coming to pass. If I allow him to score those three points, I will lose the fight. Then what I do, I get a Kimura over there. Okay? I get just the grip. I will never be able to move that and try to finish. I just got that Kimura grip over there to be able to not allow him to get the point, to score the point. Okay? So by the time uh, uh, the fight is done, I will not get an advantage just because I finished the fight with a submission in hold. I would have to make it a real danger at any point to get the advantage, okay? It's not just because the fight ended in a submission that we have to give an advantage to the athlete. So cross show going on. The athlete goes to the side, choke is still there. By the time he, he escaped the choke, then the referee will initiate the three seconds count. We just initiate the three seconds count by the time there's no submission. Okay? Then the referee has solved a real dangerous situation on the choke. Good, gave the advantage. While it was counted the three seconds, three seconds side control, three points for the pass. 
we have so uh, it's impressive how uh, many guys are still believe that three points are for side control. There is no points for side control. The points are for guard passing. Okay, if I defend the back taking and end up on side control, I will not score any points. So on this situation, the guy made the same movement. He's still calling the choke, okay? Then the guy on bottom is able to get his guard back. He's still having the choke. Only after that, the guy on white D escaped. So the guy will not even score one advantage because he was in onside control, okay, while he, when he escaped the choke. So he didn't have any point score situation without having a submission in hold on him, okay? Which is uh, a little bit different on, in a situation where, like, we have the submission in hold, okay? Then the point score position happens, okay? So it's still there, then the time is done. On that specific situation, we would, because we don't know how would that go after that, doesn't matter how many positions the, he, the, the guy did. On that case, it was a sweep and mount, but the guy will score one advantage for that. And the other guy scores one advantage because the referee saw the real, the real danger on that show. Okay, so if I, make, if I make my way to a point score position and the guy is able to get uh, uh, to recover while still having the submission in hold, I will not score. But if I make my way to the point score position and while I'm there, the time is done, I will score one advantage for that situation. And again, the submission will only be an advantage if there was a real danger situation, not because the time is done. So on that situation, the guy made to the side control before the submission get there. So he, he made to the side, so he passed the guard and then the Kimura came. Okay, so he he already has the right for an advantage because he made it to the point for position before the submission. And then when the submission came, you could see that uh, uh, for sure, uh, Joint submission is always easier to judge when it's a real dangerous situation because, let's say, an arm bar, if the arm is fully extended, for sure it's a real, a real dangerous situation. In Akimura, when the hand goes beyond the, the body line here, okay, as a referee, I'm not there to judge how flexible each athlete are, okay? So if there's a full extension in a joint submission, it's already enough for me to give the advantage, okay? It's not based on, oh, but he didn't even defend, but she didn't even express pain. So the best example we can have is when Patrick Hidalgo fought Romulo Barral. Patrick Hidalgo broke his foot. He didn't express pain. He didn't express, uh, uh, he didn't even try to defend that. So it shouldn't be an advantage then. Submission is always be based on the fully extension of the joint. On chokes, you have to get closer. You have to to see to try at least to see how tight it is to be able to judge uh, uh, how good is that choke to see the real danger situation. Okay. So on that situation that we just had was one advantage hit. So if you stretch the foot like that on the if, if you see a, a full extension on the foot, that's enough, okay? Like, uh, uh, every time, uh, I don't know how many of you guys had the uh, referee one of the Meow Brothers fights, okay? Every time someone does a toe hold on them, if you give an advantage, whoever is coached, then it's crazy. Oh, uh, but they don't tackle that, okay? I understand, but as a referee, it's not my job to realize 
which technique would be enough to make someone die. Okay, I will base on how tight and how much uh, uh, pressure was on that submission, and that's exactly what I have to do. So easy to see, like full extension of the arm, then the guy escapes. So it is one advantage. Okay, before the guy escape was a full extension on the arm which is different than that situation where it goes to the same, exactly the same movement on the armbar, okay? So, but, no, he's working on that before he had that extension on the arm, which would be the real day situation. The guy was able to escape, so no advantage. So, uh, it, it's very common, like, to, uh, to happen, sometimes you see a situation and you, you see that's an advantage already, okay? Do not rush to award that advantage because something might happen after that, okay? Especially like the guy come to a good back control, okay? With uh, both hooks, the guy fight the hooks, he starts escaping, but why did he still there trying to get control, try to fully get the control of that back? I know there was, that is an advantage already, but if the, this athlete make all the way to the full control of the back with the hooks in, I will have to give the four points. So I have no reason to give that advantage because if the, the athlete makes the full control, I will have to take the advantage off to and then give the four points. So wait until the position is done so you can award the advantage or the points over there. So that's a very common situation that happens uh, uh, when the athlete is going for a uh, sweep that end up having, uh, trying to take the back or the middle of the situation that a lot of referees, they, they do not, uh, wait enough, they end up giving the advantage, okay? And then at some point they have to they have to they have to take the advantage off to be able to be able to score the points. See, they roll sideways. So the referee wait for three seconds on that situation because he was really trying. He was not uh, uh, trying to come on top. So he tried to hold the back control over there and did not come on top. So came on top moved to the side, adjust himself, and came on top. So even if, if it was more than three seconds, while there is still that fight, okay, we're not going to even open the three seconds count. While they fight in the road from side, there is still, uh, even if there is a city belt, but there is still a scramble on that situation, I will not even open the three seconds. Only when they stop, and the athlete on the back is not trying to come on top, then I open that three seconds count. And then if on those three seconds, the athlete doesn't try to come on top, I give that advantage. Then by the time I give that advantage, there is no way the athlete will score the two points anymore. The athlete will be able to come on top to take the back. But if I already gave the advantage for this week, will not have a chance for a sweep anymore. That's the situation. So he was holding there, not trying to come on top at all. On that situation, I counted three seconds, and then as he comes on top, then that will be only the four points for the back control.
So uh, uh, we have to to understand that uh, try to keep as much as we can the heat of the fight, okay? So especially all situations where you see it's clear that one athlete is fighting really hard to move forward in the fight and the other one is avoiding uh, uh, the fight, we have, uh, uh, we're not, we are not there to help one of the athletes, okay? But we are there, uh, uh, if one athlete is trying to fight, the other, we, we, not, we, we cannot help his opponent on keeping the fight as, as low as possible, okay? Uh, uh, we have to, if, if we have to stop the fight, we're going to have to choose the best moment. So the rule says that as we see two-thirds of the athletes on top of the safety area, we have to stop. But as I have for you, I will not be there and, oh, okay, so might be, oh, I think it's a little bit less than two-thirds is two, so let me not stop the fight right now. No, if I have a chance, because if a very good established uh, uh, position, okay, I will stop the fight. Uh, if they are just a little bit over the yellow, uh, the safety area, I will stop that fight. And uh, But noticing that it's a situation that I, one of them will not take advantage of that. Okay, I will never stop a fight that I don't know if I will be able to bring it back to the middle on exactly the same situation. Sometimes they both are over the yellow line, okay, but they are in a movement that I know if I stop, one of them will, will be uh, 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 helping on that situation. So I will not stop. Like I will judge whatever the way I have to. If I see the guy on top, then take advantage and, and using that to jump outside. So this athlete will be penalized. If I see the bottom guy standing up in a sweep and bringing back to the middle, so I will not interrupt that at all. So you have to be calm and you have to understand by going back right there in the beginning when I told you that your knowledge of jiu-jitsu will help you on that situation, especially when they are all on top of the safety area, uh, uh, based on the type of technique they, they are uh, applying or trying to apply over there, you can you know which direction they're going to take. So, okay, so if it's a butterfly guard, the only way to sweep for him is this way. So I will, maybe I can just stop the fight and just turn their head to the opposite side, and then they will have everything they need to because the sweep will never be. And then the guy on top starts pushing himself outside. So what he's doing? Try to pass or try to escape the fight? So that's what's going to help you. The technique will always help you on those situations. Okay? We, we can never stop those fights if there is submission in home unless... It's uh, uh, there is a beating unless uh, 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 like that happened to to me before. I think was uh, spontaneo, spontaneo was with me. Like the guy had a non bar, and the guys came from the other area and fall on top of them. And then the guy that had the arm bar let go and stood up. So what could we do on that? So if he just kept holding over there the fight would be able to keep going. But he was the one that let go the submission and stood up. So he was winning by six points. He ended up, and with a non-body hold, he ended up losing by eight to six. So for sure, uh, I, I don't even have to say that his coach uh, said that it was all fault because he lost the fight. But uh, uh, maybe there will be some things that will happen that like... Uh, one of, one of our friends from Brazil, he had a fight at Pen Ams last year that the fight uh, ended up 6-0 to zero because of three triangles that the TV shut down. So he had to stop the fight with the guy in a good triangle three times inside the same fight. Okay? So there are some things that will happen that will make you have to stop the fight. But uh, uh, it's not... 
because of something that they have been what to do is because something uh, aware of what we do that made him stop the fight. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> try as many uh, uh, as less as possible to disengage the guys as you stop the fight. And plus, don't turn your back. Don't say paro. Turn your back and walk to the middle. Okay, if the goal is to keep the heat of the fight, you're gonna lose everything as you turn your back to them. Okay, plus sometimes uh, you stop the fight and the athlete stays there, head down, and maybe you come to fight from another area and hit that athlete. So if you stay there, you're gonna be aware of that situation as well. Okay, and uh, as we let's say a full guard. A 50 50 situation is easy to allow them to disengage and then come back to the middle. It's easy for us to adjust. But sometimes, uh, like even in a half guard, you you never know how much uh, a lapel the guy has under the, the leg there. You don't know how much pressure, okay? And then the athlete is holding his waist over there to not let him uh, adjust himself. So, if we allow them to uh, uh, disengage and then try to move them back, one of them will take advantage of the situation. So if you have to stop, make sure you let them know to don't change anything and you pull them back to the middle, okay? Or like based on the directions they might take on that uh, uh, sweep, the possible situations that they might take on, on, on that sweep, just a, a turn the heads to give them some extra uh, added space to continue on the move, to continue on the movement. Okay. So those situations that go out of bounds, we have uh, like the the guy doing the attack takes the fight out of bounds. Okay. It was his movement that he just didn't measure uh, 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 the distance very well, okay? If there was a real danger, I would give him the advantage for the choke, okay? Maybe the advantage for the hook on the back, okay? On that specific situation, I, I wouldn't, okay? Uh, uh, and no two points. Okay, we see so many athletes taking the fight outside, not because, uh, not intentionally, okay, but the situation where we give the two points is when by defending the attack, okay, so it's the right technique to, to escape the attack that led the fight out of bounds. So that's a situation where we give the two points. As soon as we say paro, we already give the two points. So, one more time. So they go, <coughs> they go out of bounds. So see, the half says Paro, I already give the two points, and he's there waiting, pointing to the athletes to go to the middle, okay, and waiting for them to walk. So he's not just walking himself to the middle and allowing it to stay there. So when it's not the, the, the right technique to defend the movement, then we're not gonna have a penalty, we're not gonna have two points, that will be just disqualification. And you have to understand that a lot of times, a lot of times, like the athletes start driving the fight as much as possible to the, to the safety area. And then from there, the athlete does the right movement to escape. But everything he did before that was just to take the fight there. Okay? So, oh, no, but I was doing the right movement. But, like, look, everything that we did, to let the fight to here. So your your goal was not to escape, was to not to escape the, the, the submission, was to escape the match. Uh, 
See, look, he's pushing, 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 and then, oh, no, I just lost my balance, and then I end up holy falls. So that's a situation where the guy attacking wants the two points and then takes the fight out of bounds. So maybe we're going to give one advantage for him if there was a real danger situation, but you have to give the penalty for him because that wasn't the right, that wasn't the right movement that he was doing trying to finish that fight. Okay, so if you see that the guy attacking Take the fight out of bounds, not uh, uh, on, on purpose, but because he was trying to finish, okay? But he took the fight out of bounds, okay? So we're going to give him just the advantage, okay? If the movement of defending uh, from the, his opponent took the fight out of bounds, that's when we give the two points. Okay, if the movement of the guy depending the technique wasn't the right move, he was just trying to go out, out of bounds, that's when we uh, DQ them. And when the movement of the guy attacking is taking the fight off, uh, out of bounds, but it's not the right movement, it's clear that you see the athlete just trying to take the fight out of bounds, okay, that's when you give a penalty to this guy. So uh, at least one of the athletes, okay? So you see guys like Eric jumping and trying to get, trying to get, hoping to get a grip on the middle of the movement to, and then fall on board, okay? So the grip has to have before initiate the movement. We know how hard it is to see every situation, okay? Especially like the lighter they are, okay? And the higher the level is, like, seems like they're training that like for like uh, 10 hours a day, just how to pull guard as fast as possible, okay? And whoever gets on top first, scores on an advantage, for sure respecting the, the situation that we cannot score uh, if we have a solution in hold. So double pull, the half ring has to look to the watch. Okay, when we do that, it's, it's a, 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 to show everyone around that we saw that as a double pull. Every time you don't look to, it, it, even if it's just a gesture, okay, you don't have to, to count the 20 seconds all on your watch, okay? You can use the TV. I like to use the TV because it's way easier to keep, uh, uh, to don't lose the track of the fight and look on the TV, okay? But when we do not do that, seems to everyone that one of them put God first. So we have to do, even if you are one of the side referees, you have to do that. So 20 seconds, one parent each. So those are the situations that are already over the 20 seconds come down, but the guy is almost completely a post score position. As soon as the guy defends the back and they face each other uh, uh, as a double pull guard situation, we give we stop, bring them start, uh, uh, standing, give the advantage for almost back taking, but one penalty each and restart the fight. So you see that the referee didn't look to his watch. It means the guy in a white he, he saw the guy white he put, put in the guard first. As the guy come on top, two points. Okay? 
We have the situations where we go beyond the 20 seconds as well because there is a submission hole that you guys could see here. Uh, if I use that submission hole to come on top, the referee will not have a chance to stop. Then, as I come on top, then I let go the submission. I'm already on top. It's good if the submission was at some point a real danger, I will get the advantage for the submission. For sure, the advantage for coming on top, and then you just let the fight keep going. But I, it's already over 20 seconds. I'm working that submission, but then I let go to come on top. Before the guy come on top, the half race stop the fight and stood them back up and give a punch to each of them. So some athletes, they pull guard, okay? They do, they do like a fake pull, but they just sit on their heels and look to the referee, hoping that the referee will give them. See, he just sit on his heel. He didn't like really pull guard, came on top. So you, we have to be very careful with that because uh, uh, usually happens on, on the blind side of the referee. So everyone outside can see it, but we cannot see. So we have to be very careful with that. So this is the situation where the side referees will, will disagree. So the central referees saw as a double pool, but the side referees didn't see it's a double pool. So they stand up taking off the pool of the guy that pull uh, uh, behind, okay? So I saw I, I saw the guy in a white gear point first, so I will take off the pool of the guy in a blue gear, okay? And then as the guy in a white gear come up, the referee will have, central referee will have to give the two points, okay? Because it wasn't a double pool, the guy in a white gear pool got first. In that case, the referee should take it off the double he, pool yes. first and then give it two points he, to everyone. He happens. should, he should, like as a central referee, uh, he should, like, because both side referees took the, the, the pool of the guy at Ruki, the, the central referee should uh, do the same gesture, but the movement happens, happens so fast that the guy came on top before he does that, then he just uh, uh, so would it be very important that everyone that's there, especially the coaches, knows the rules, okay? Because by the, as a coach, by the time I see both referees taking off the pool of my students, I would tell him, hey, if he comes on top, even before the referee, the central referee, do it. I know because both side referees did. So it means no double pool for the guy in a blue gear. He was a, a pool for the guy in a white gear. Okay? So if you are the central referee and you have enough time to then take the, the pool of the guy in a blue gear as well, you do it. But on that situation, as you guys could see, was too fast. So it's clear that the guy in a white gear pulled first. Then, as you look, then both like taking, and then as you saw, both standing up was already there, or the guy now he coming on top. Okay, so if you have time, you do it. If you don't, then you don't give the two points. So the guy on bottom is the one uh, uh, stalling, so the athlete has to see that he's being penalized. On that situation, it's easier because he's looking to the half rate. So they have point to him, look, and give the penalty. On that situation, he's uh, working so hard to stop the fight that he cannot even see the half rate. So then the half rate must touch him and say, look. So I will touch the half I will touch the athlete as I touch him and say, look, and then I do the gesture. If I have to point to him because if the athlete is able to see, I will look 
and then I do the gesture. Because when I point to him and say, Luch, I'm telling him that he's being penalized. And when I do the gesture, is when I'm telling everyone around that this guy is being penalized. Okay? So most of the times, the, the, no one outside knows why uh, the athlete is being penalized because just they cannot hear if it was Luch or Falta, but as they just see it, they know the athlete is being penalized, okay? So, a 50-50 guard situation. So, when the penalty is for both athletes, and the side referees uh, want to call that, we just stand up and we do that. Okay, by doing that and holding that situation, it means it's for both athletes. Okay, if it's for just one, then I do that and I show the side that I want to give the penalty. If it's for both of them, I just stand up and hold that situation here, go hold that gesture. That would be enough for the central referee to understand that it's for both athletes. See, now they did, and they showed which side it was, and then the referee went there, Luch, and made the gesture. It's clear? So it's been a referee need to go ahead and... No, the no, 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 because uh, uh, the side referees, they do that because they don't have the verbal comment. They just have the gesture. That's so if there aren't two side referees, will will they need to go ahead and do... The, the, the side referees, they have to do the gesture to, to show this and referee uh, what type of penalty they push. Okay, but if there are no side referees uh, uh, um, and then you call for the stone? No, no, I, I would say good exactly the same way. Okay. So that's how we end the fight. Paru. Ask them to fix the keys. Then we're gonna put, uh, uh, get them in position in front, facing the TV, two steps back, ask the side referees to stand up, and then as I walk forward, I raise the arm. And it's very important that all three referees raise their arm on the same time, okay? What situation is that? It was a draw, it was a tight score. So it means both coaches on outside saying, yes, you did good, you won. So if they see, even if it's just a, a, a minor uh, uh, distance in between myself raising my arm and the other referee raising his arm, they will take that to blame on you for their athlete's loss. Okay, so it's very important that uh, you do two steps, you position them, you do two steps back, then you ask them to stand up, okay? So as a central referee and as a side referee, you have to be uh, uh, very focused on that time. So as soon as I start, I step forward on my right leg, I step and raise the arm at the same time, and the side referees have to raise the arm on the same time for us to have any problem with that type of situation. So we have to have common sense uh, uh, in any traumatic blow, okay? So that, does that was uh, uh, an accident, was a, or was a disciplinary fall? Okay, the athlete, uh, uh, it was just a, a, a roof grip that he lost and his hand and that hitting the other guy chin or it was a punch that the guy was like faking over there. We have to have a common sense to, to uh, interpret that, those situations, okay? Uh, in a white belt division, uh, we do not have white belt no gi, but even we all, all uh, we don't have white belt no gi, but even on the gi, we might see some wrestling nivel college, okay, or uh, black, judo black belts, okay, or even uh, MMA fighters, even if they are amateurs too, 
Okay, so we're gonna have their names over there on the TV. If you see any white belt having a very good level on the pink downs, on the throws, okay, or like a control so good on the on the match. So, or you take the name off the TV. If you if you cannot see it, you ask the ring coordinator and ask the name of the guy, okay. Try to do, do not take two, three fights, okay, to do that. On the first fight that you see that athlete, you're in go there, take the name, and to do not stop your match area, you ask the, the referee coordinator to go and Google the name of this athlete because if it's a, a MMA fighter, if we just throw that name on share dog, the, if they have just one fight, like, uh, 55 years ago, that you still show there, okay? And if it's a uh, college, uh, college wrestler or judo black belt, uh, it will have something on, on international pool. Sometimes just talking to the coach, they they open that for you, for sure without knowing about the rule, but uh, they will tell you something. So tomorrow we have a looking, right? How are we going to proceed about this? And like, we're going to talk to them too. We don't have panels for that situation, okay? Uh, what we did on the last uh, no key votes, that was back uh, in December of last year, hey, uh, uh, if you see like one athlete, you can do like a, a verbal warning, watch your hands, okay? But if you see they uh, insisting too much on that, something that it's not, but it, it, if it's intentional, it's not that hard to see. Like he's not snapping the head. He's really, really trying to uh, 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 cause some reaction, bad reaction on your point. So we should avoid the reaction because the reaction for sure is going to be harder so we have to be to be very careful but yes yeah okay but like no more than one I, I believe one is more than enough because the athletes already know that you you look and you sing it okay so if they insist then it's a, 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 a disciplinary fault it's a disqualification of the tournament not the fights okay uh, especially on the nogi, like uh, any uh, skin uh, a problem that you might see on the athletes, that's not on you, okay? The only thing the referee has to do is see it. As you see it, ask the, 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 the medical to come and overlook that. If they say the athlete is good, the athlete fights. If they say no good, then the athlete will not fight, okay? And uh, situations where it is bleeding, especially if it's a situation, a hard situation to stop the fight, okay? Try to understand that, okay, so uh, uh, it's, bleeding, it's just a little bit, it's just like a, a, a very small scratch. Then if the athlete just passed the heat, we will stop the bleeding or it's something that really, really bleeding. Okay, try to have, like, it's a common sense situation as well. So, uh, uh, going over lack of combativeness now, okay, uh, any, any situation Any situation where the athlete is not uh, uh, is defending, okay, it's clear that defending uh, from mount, back control or side control or north south situation. If I'm defending myself, okay, I cannot uh, be penalized for that, okay. Like mount and back control, uh, it's it would be like impossible to, 
to give a penalty to both of them because there is, because there is no progression from them. Okay, so if the guy has a back control or a mount, respecting the characteristics of the technical position, the athlete cannot be penalized. Neither the other one that's just defending themselves can be penalized too. Okay, on the side control and north south situation, let's say you have side control myself, and then I, uh, I have a very good flexibility. Uh, not now, but I used to have that back then, like uh, uh, 20, 20 years ago. Okay, maybe more. Then I bring my foot all the way uh, uh, on behind your neck, okay, hugging there. Then I pass your lapel, I wrap around my foot, and then I hug it there. And even if you try to lift your head to get a better posture, try to move forward, you can. So I'm not defending myself. Okay, I'm just holding you there. Defend yourself means like the, the athlete has space to attack you, but you def doing a good job defending yourself. So in case of just holding, the athlete can be penalized. So it's clear that defending from an opponent attack. Okay, so on-site control might be situations where the athlete is not defending and it's just stolen. Okay. Uh, we have to, <clears throat> a very specific situation, okay? okay? Doesn't matter what penalties uh, uh, both athletes had before, maybe it's because of uh, illegal grip, maybe it's because of uh, running away of the net, doesn't matter the first two penalties of them, okay? If it's the third penalty for both of them on the same time, for lack of combativeness, we have to stand them up. Okay? If the third penalty for them on the same time, for lack of combativeness, okay? Oh, but what if it's the third one for one and the second one for the other? Then we don't do that. The only situation is when it's the third penalty for both of them, then we stand them up. Okay? If you see, if you see the athlete already trying to, seeking to uh, compete on the edge of the, the competition area, okay, the, the athlete is already driving to the situation to be penalized for uh, fleeing the match, okay? Oh, we always, we can, we have to have a penalty, okay, for every athlete who intentionally takes the fight out of the path, okay? Always. Okay, so going over uh, uh, me reading now, okay? So serious fouls and severe fouls. Serious fouls is the foul that goes to the scoreboard, okay? That would be just a foul, okay? Severe foul would be disqualification of the match, okay? So if the athlete goes just a little bit, after the, the, the body's uh, middle line, that's a serious foul. So if there is no submission in hold, it's important, okay? There is no submission in hold, the athlete pass just a little bit of the body middle line, okay? That's when you stop, you take the foot off to where the foot was before. If the foot wasn't on the hip, you're not going to place the foot on the hip because that would give a, a good control to the athlete. So you have to place the foot where the foot was before passing that in line, give a penalty and restart the fight. See? So they have removed the foot where it was before, give a penalty to the guy in a boogie and restart the fight. So severe foul when cross the full limit of the body. So the leg is coming from behind, okay, and going all the way across over the body line, okay? So that's exactly what's called foot stuck because the pressure coming from outside to inside 
and the foot is stuck because the foot cannot follow that movement. So the pressure will go on the knee on that direction, but be, because of the foot is staying stuck on this side, that's when we have the injuries. Okay, here it, even easier to see. So because especially because the athlete in a blue gi is bearing his weight on top of that foot. Okay, the pressure comes from outside to inside, so the foot will never pass to the other side as well because it's stuck uh, uh, in between the armpit and the hip of the guy in a white knee. So the pressure coming and the knee will go with the foot stay. That's when uh, uh, the injuries happen. Okay, so passing all the way to the other side, then it's a severe foul, not a serious foul. So no submission and hold, but that will pass all the way to the other side. Paru. Then disqualification to the guy in a boogie. Okay, also on that situation here, uh, it doesn't go all the way to the other side. It passes just the midline, but there is a submission you hold. So you cannot stop it. The same athlete who is doing the reaping is the one attacking the submission. So on that situation, it has to be a severe foul, okay, disqualification. So this one here <clears throat> is a little bit like that was actually happening more often on the, the, the last tournaments we had, okay? So the guy in the YTD is attacking the, the <clears throat> straight ankle lock, and the guy in the blue gi is ripping to try to go there and defend his foot using the opposite foot. So the guy in the blue gi is the one ripping to try to defend himself. So the, the, on this specific case here, the guy in the blue gi would be the one being DQ. See? Attacking the foot lock, could have the foot just on the hip, but it crossed the midline, so it's enough for the disqualification. So that situation here, it's, it's clear to see the foot going across, okay? But that's exactly what we see as a free foot. So before the foot was stuck in here, in between the hip and the armpit. Now, the, uh, uh, doesn't matter how much pressure we put from outside to inside, the knee will come this way, but the foot will come as well. So there will be no risk of hurting your uh, opponent. And on the second picture is, uh, is crossing, okay, but it's uh, uh, below the knee line, so it's not a problem. Okay, so you can see, we can see the knee is here, so he's crossing below the knee. It would, it would to be illegal, would have to be above the knee should they become a illegal, illegal situation. So going to the, the they call a uh, honey hole situation. Okay, so the guy is attacking your foot that doesn't have a ripping. Okay, so attacking the foot, uh, 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 the, the leg that he's crossing, He's able to keep the foot free for the whole time. See? So the other leg is there. He's not even touching that leg. So the only thing that he would, couldn't do is to move on that direction, to the opposite direction of the leg under attack. So he gets the, the foot locked, or he moves his up, or forcing himself 
to the opposite side or to the same direction as the foot under attack. So that's the situation where uh, 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 we see one of the athletes looking for the situation which is legal because the guy in a white gear was uh, uh, on the ground. Okay, by the time the guy in a white gear stand up, then the technique becomes I illegal. But we cannot blame on any of the athletes for that because one. Uh, the guy in the blue gear was looking for the technique was in a legal situation. And when the guy uh, in the white gear comes on top, it is because he wants to defend himself. He wants to be able to get on top to keep working on the guard situation. So we just stop and disengage them and restart the fight with the guy in the blue gear uh, 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 is still holding his guard situation, okay, but without the risk situation. So the guy in the blue keys initiate the movement on bottom. By the time the guy in the white key comes on top. We go back, to, we just go back to the same situation. So we start disengaging them and combat with them facing each other. That situation is a little bit harder because the guy in the white he defending himself, okay? So he fight to come on top because he wants to defend himself, okay? So on that situation, we have to start disengage them, but with the guy in a blue key on bottom, because the guy in a white key already came on top, and we give the two points for the guy in a white key because he was on bottom, now he's on top, before restarting the fights. Would you count it out before you stop it? Sorry? Would you count the three before you stop it, or would you stop it immediately? It's very complicated because uh, uh, my... We, you might give enough time for them to get hurt, but before stopping, you have to count three seconds. So on the first situation, the guy who was on top is just coming back on top, so you don't wait. Mm -hmm. But on this situation, because he's coming from bottom to top, and because you're gonna stop to give him two points, mm -hmm. you have to count. So, so in this specific situation, yes, you would count? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because when the guy who was on bottom comes on top, then we have a two-point situation because of sweep. Then we have to come. If the guy on top just coming back on top, then we don't have any point situation, okay? Then we just stop and disengage. What's your name? <laughs> So this is the guy in our TV was already on top. Yeah. So he comes back on top. So then no time. We stop. Okay, we just disengage then with the guy in the boogie still on bottom, the guy in our TV still on top. So no points, no counts to be done. On that situation, the guy in our TV is the one on bottom. So he goes on top to defend himself. And then a situation who was legal because so we would have to wait three seconds and then stop the fight to disengage them 
he started the fight with the guy now, the blue guy, the guy in the blue gear on bottom, giving two points to the guy in the white gear, and start the fight. Good? Is it clear to everyone? Yeah, we have a, a situation that was uh, uh, is uh, very common now too, which uh, uh, the guy is being inside with the 50-50 guard situation. Okay, that's how we start. We do not allow them to keep going the move. You, you have to be, by the time you see the guy uh, in a 50-50 guard standing, you have to be aware of that situation might happening. Okay, so you understand that before, and then you are already waiting for that situation to happen. By the time the guy initiates the move inside, so you just take the foot to where it was before, you give them a penalty, and without the disengage, you just bring it back to the initial position. Okay, that situation, uh, uh, if we uh, let them keep going, it's very hard to see inside the fight, you guys are more than, than uh, never should go to the schools and drill that situation. Because when he initiates the, it's very hard to see if he cross a ball, or below the knee line, okay? When the, the, the referee said paro, then you could see that the leg was and that above the knee, so okay. But when the referee said paro, then wasn't that clear yet. So if it's not clear, you should not even say paro then, okay? But because that's a very specific situation, as they initiate the movement, doesn't matter if you see it going below or above, we have to stop the fight, bring the, the foot where it was before, and give them a penalty, okay? Uh, serious fun. On that situation, the guy spins without bringing the foot Across. Let me show again. So see, his foot will not go inside. See? So, on that specific case, that is nothing to worry. And then, in another situation, uh, they got to lock, lock the foot or no? Sorry? Yeah, another situation, you guys cross outside uh -huh. the side. They're, they're, they're got moving, block the, the foot or no? But he, he when, when uh, uh, initiated spin, he goes all the way across and hook behind the lad. That's the, 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 worst, the worst situation. That's why we stop because will be so much pressure come from outside to inside. Yeah. Okay. Um, While I'm, 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 the floor is, uh, yeah, uh, is considered. The floor is the yeah, it's the, yes, exactly. Okay, on that situation, then uh, the foot doesn't cross. It's just a, a, a regular movement where uh, an injury might happen, which a lot of other movements that we have as well. Okay, but there is nothing illegal on that move. The problem on the other one is because it was uh, uh, we. Uh, used to have some uh, uh, example from fights and even you watching re-watching like five six ten times it was still hard to see if it was below or above the knee okay that's why we got on that uh, uh, to to do that okay which like my personal belief is not uh, 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 the best still okay but it was a situation that you had to do something uh, uh, back on that moment, okay? But now we are working to, to bring some better solution to that situation. But that's how you guys are gonna proceed if any of those moments happen 
tomorrow. So would it would it still revolt sitting and he brings the foot over and across? Then there is no holding and then he's holding the far leg, not just at the then the, 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 then it's free foot. Yeah, then it's free foot. Right. Then there's no no problem. Okay. The 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 biggest uh, uh problem that we might have in that situation would be in a brown and black belt when they do that trying to go for a straight leg lock. So as long as they don't apply pressure outside of the knee, as long as they can come on top and do a real straight leg lock, it's totally fine. Okay, the biggest problem in that situation is because the guy is standing, is that like a Roger S. Okay, he's standing back in the weight on that foot. Okay, that's what makes the position even uh, more dangerous. Okay, so specific, specific uh, uh, single leg situation. Okay, so for juvenile or, and younger divisions and white belts, a white belt doesn't matter the age. Okay, all the way to master 150. Is if they are white belts, we we not been allowed them uh, to have the head outside. As soon as that head goes outside. We stop the fight, disengage them, and restart the fight with no penalty. We just do not allow them to continue with the head outside. For blue belts and uh, adults and up, so then we can just allow them to keep going. Okay? So uh, uh, a lot of athletes complain about that, but as I have read, we are the last line of cut. So if you see one athlete getting like ready to walk in, but you see that the gi might be too small, the, 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 the pants are too uh, uh, short, okay, too tight. So if uh, uh, a problem in the belt, so the referee has to tell them to go change to go change the belt if it's the case, okay? So any problem that might pass on the gi check control should not pass uh, under the half side. So they will, oh, but I passed over there. Okay, but I am the last line of cut and I'm telling you to go change your pants. Otherwise, you're not going to compete, okay? Uh, uh, we have to still ask their names, okay? So it says there, uh, uh, Brandon Walker, but I will not, hey, Brandon, the name of the guy is Diego. But you say, Brandon, he's, he, the adrenaline is so high that he say, yes, yes, I'm Brandon. He's not thinking, he's just ready to go, okay? So you ask, what's your name? And maybe he say, it's very common here, you ask. Uh, Nicholas, what's your name? Nick. No, sir, I'm sorry. What's your full name? Okay. Make them tell you their full name so you can see on the scoreboard and make sure they are who is uh, uh, supposed to be there to compete and on the right color. Okay. Make sure they are, they have, they are on the right color. If they are on the wrong color, their gesture here should be enough for the score. Uh, uh, border to switch the color. Okay. Uh, uh, every time you stop the fight and restart, make sure the, the person working as a scorekeeper is stopping the fight and restarting the fight. Okay. Sometimes uh, 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 three, two seconds make a huge difference. Okay. I do a sweep because, and then it, it was only two seconds left. Okay, then that would be just an advantage. But the scorekeeper allowed to keep going five seconds when they have to eat, say they said paro back three minutes ago. So a situation where I get just an advantage and uh, lose the fight because I got just that advantage, I could be getting two points and win that fight. So especially uh, like all of you, you guys here, as you know what is to be there competing, you know how bad, how hard it would be to go home knowing that uh, uh, because of those couple seconds you lost a fight. So 
don't do not allow them to have that feeling going home too long. Okay, and every time uh, talk to the scorekeeper and tell them to just mark who is the winner of the fight as you raise the arm. Okay, happens a lot that the athletes winning by ten points, then the other one finishes. But the, the scorekeeper is there on his own. Okay, so then they just tag there. Okay, so oh, okay, so they tag the, the winner over there. They will tag the guy who was winning by ten points. They didn't see that to raise the the other guy's arm. Okay, so ask them to just raise the arm to to just get the victory to the guy you raise the arm and make sure they do that on every single fight. So that's the scoreboard we're gonna have over there. Easy to see the athlete's name, okay? So then easy to confirm as they tell you their names, okay? Easy to see the academy that they belong to, so not gonna have a hard time to do not do a, a, a fight of your teammate, okay? So we always gonna have there the class, chair uh, 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 and belt, and weight class, okay? So if it's a white belt, uh, you know the rules with the white belt, blues and purples, browns and black, okay? Easy to, to see those things, okay? Uh, all, all on the blue are the points that the, the athlete score, on the yellow would be the advantage, and on the red would be the uh, uh, penalties, okay? Every uh, serious foul, the ones who go to the scoreboard are scored on the red. So whoever has more points wins. If there's a tight score on the, on the points, then whoever has more advantage wins, okay? If there's a still a tight score on the advantage, then whoever has less penalties against would be the winner. So it does not exist that, okay, so he has one advantage and one penalty, so the penalty takes the advantage off. It does not exist, okay? Advantage is worth more than a penalty. So this is the gesture for illegal grip, okay? Every time we give them a penalty, foul. And then we do that to show everyone around it was very unclear to everyone. It's, it's always very unclear to everyone when we give them penalties for uh, illegal grips. Okay. And that's it. Thank you so much, guys. Really? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs>